Good afternoon. This is Pastor Timothy L. Walker of YHVH Church of Philadelphia in Culpeper, Virginia. Today is October the 16th, the year of our Lord, 2022. I want to thank you for joining us and first apologize for being 15 minutes late. Uh, my computer was going through some uh, updates when I got on it and uh, so I had to let that finish and make sure I had enough time to join you okay anyway so we're in uh, part three of God's natural truth uh, last week I ended in uh, Genesis uh, 15 verse 6 and uh, basically the question is there was there a there was a question. Why the sword of Israel was necessary? So you take that S off of sword, you got word. But anyway, needless to say, here nor there. Um, so we're going to try to finish that up today. Uh, so I'll be in Genesis uh, 15, starting in the 15, uh, verse 7. Uh, go through a little bit of Genesis 16 and 17. Hit a little bit of Deuteronomy 13, which I had hit that a couple of weeks ago in the message I gave on part two of If and uh, Deuteronomy 20. Okay? So go with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up. We just want to just say thank you, God just for allowing us just to be alive, regardless of whatever circumstances are around us. And camp your angels about us, keep us safe, and uh, that we may walk on that path towards salvation. We know it's now, whenever we mess up, just repent and keep it going and don't beat our own selves up. Hide my flesh on that cross, nail it, let the blood bleed out so Jesus' blood can cover all our sins and that his Holy Spirit can circumcise our hearts and minds. You know how I say ours. Most of these messages I'm giving is not only for the people that God gave me to give it to, but it's also for me. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> like I said again, sorry for being a little late. Uh, so let's just get right on into it. Uh, you should have your, your Bible. Hopefully you do. Uh, turn to Genesis chapter 7. And at the end, uh, that question, by the time I get to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20, that question should be answered. But uh, I have a whole outline that really covers the... Uh, the whole Bible. So I've been given topical messages and I started on Facebook with the choice is yours. The choice is always yours. You are free will to make up your mind whatever you want to do. You're in charge of your salvation. God's not going to make you do anything that you don't want to do. Okay? He's a merciful gracious and loving God but he will back off but just remember when you pray it's in his will it's not in your will it ain't Burger King you ain't gonna get it your way it's gonna be in God's will he has a plan so you gotta conform to his plan okay so now Israel so in in Genesis uh Chapter 15, it's about uh, Abel. Now, you know, when I get there, we'll get there. Abram, before he, uh, is his name, before he, for God changed his name to Abraham. And he also changed Sarah's name to Sarah. Now, when he changes your name, I mean, there's something behind that. Now, like I said, I gave the last message I gave topical was if. If is conditional. So everything that 
God gave to Abraham, it was conditional. It was going to be a covenant. Now, if Abraham broke the covenant, because God ain't going to break the covenant, man's going to break it. Okay? But his plan will go on. So, uh, I'll just start at verse 6 where I left off. And uh, we'll give you a little background. So, you know, in verse 15, Abraham was complaining that, hey, he ain't got no seed line to uh, leave his inheritance to of things that God had already promised him. Okay? And uh, so anyway, uh, when you get down to verse 6, it says, And he believed in the Lord, which is Abel, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, verse 7. And he said, Him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans. Now, the Chaldeans are Aramaic. Okay. To give thee this land to inherit it. So you see, we're setting up. He, he, he's telling Abraham, I'm going to give you this land. You're going to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? So here we go. Flesh getting in the way. Now, you know Abram believed God because God told him to leave. But he told him to leave his kindred back. But he took Lot. So, you know, that's one bad thing that he did. But he still believed and he left. Now he's questioning God. How should I know the inheritance? And he said unto him, take me and half her a three years old, a she goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, turtle dove, and young pigeon. So he had three animals and two birds. Three plus two is five. You know, I kind of get off in little numbers sometimes. Grace. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Okay, so we're going to kind of move this a little along. It's some things you're going to have to read on your own. The gist of this message is he killed the animals. Understand what he did. You got a sheep goat, you got a ram. The ram is the male. Okay. And uh, got a half. Now, now, you know, goats kind of, you know. Anyway. Verse 13. And he said unto Abel, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for 400 years. Prophesied. Now, how long was Israel in slavery to Egypt? Now, <clears throat> I'm going by the Bible. Now, as uh, far as uh, historical, you can look up history. Uh, you can find out if it was 402 years, 398, whatever. But God's telling them what's going to happen. Why was it necessary? Now, you should be already, I mean, if you know anything about the Bible and what's going to happen, man and this flesh that we in, we just have... Uh, on some occasions have not allowed this uh, any man to take control. Therefore, we're going to break we're going to break some laws. No. We're going to break some laws. And uh, 
and these laws that uh that um, we break is uh is God's commandments. Okay, someone was trying to come in. It, I'm, I am Facebook Live. This is not the chat room. Okay. Every Sunday, message two p.m. Now unless I'm gonna be late, I'll let you know ahead of time. It's Facebook Live, or I'll put it out on uh, Weiss V A C O P uh, YouTube channel. Tuesday night is the chat room where we can interact with each other. Okay. All right. Uh, kind of got a little distracted. Okay. So anyway. Go back to verse 13. Highlight that as prophecy. God didn't tell him it was going to be a stranger in the land. <clears throat> uh, and Egypt has always been a base nation. Now, you know, Egypt ain't no big, great nation with all these nuclear weapons and this, this, and that. It's always been a base nation. God's always had his hand on it. Not for a cursing, mostly for a blessing to other nations, mostly Israel. Now, Israel has makes up 12 tribes. And you must get this understood. You had 10 northern tribes and two southern tribes. And sometimes during that history time, you had a king to the north and a king to the south. And then sometimes you had a king of all of Israel. But Jerusalem was in the south. And a lot of them didn't want to worship or go down on those at least those three holidays, Feast of Tabernacle, Pentecost, and uh, uh, Passover, go down to Jerusalem. So, you know, the king of the north, you know, he said, hey, look, that's too far to go. You know how sometimes we get, hey, you know, church is too long. I, that's all right, you know, it's too far away. Can't go. I'm going to do it here. And then, you know, you go on TV, you do whatever. You get distracted. But they was worshiping other gods. So why was the sword necessary? I'm going to answer for it for you right now because I'm going to have to cook with a little gas because I definitely don't want to be with you long today. I got things I have to do too. Okay, so, but he's been, I already gave him prophecy. Oh, you're going to be uh, 400 years. Verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with a great substance. So when they left Egypt, everybody had seen the, uh, the movie Moses. It's going to come on. It always comes on you know, around about Easter time. Uh, Passover. When they left, they left with a lot of riches. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full okay and I didn't really want to go over Genesis 15 word for word but once you get this and then we can kind of bypass some things not bypass you know it's up to you to kind of read and get the gist of it uh but the Amorites, it, it ain't came full. Now, you got a lot of ites and all that. And if you notice anything when you read through the Bible, I told you, now you got to keep the two genealogies, Cain and Adam. Adam is Adamic. Cain, children of Cain are called the Kenites, K-E-N-I-T-E-S. I'll just leave it at that. It is what it is. Verse 17, And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoke, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Those pieces he's talking about, we're going back to verse 9. Got to go back. Remember, you know, he cut those animals up, laid them side by side. So that's what he's talking about. In the same day that the Lord made a covenant, as an agreement with Abraham, saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river 
Egypt until the great river, the river Euphrates. The Kenites. Now that's the bad seed. I just I'm just gonna just get it on out there. It's gonna be with you. Jesus said, "Don't even worry about it." You know the angels. You know when he gave the parable of the tares. You know Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God, and the word became flesh and walked among us. It's the whole Bible. Jesus. The Kenites, the Kanzerites, the Kadamites, the Hittites, the Perezites, the Rams, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergesites, and the Jebusites. Uh, uh, interesting on that, uh, this is going to be a little go, the Jebusites. Jerusalem was of the Jebusites until. Uh, God decided, hey, this one will set up heaven. That's what you want to call it. His kingdom. You know, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom of heaven is like. Uh, when you read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Or the kingdom of God is like. He tells you how it's like. Really, he's telling you how it's going to be. Okay. So, Genesis 16. Now, I'm just going to give you some things because God had made a promise, a covenant with Abel. And this is just an example. Paul tells you, you know, hey, read. You got all types of examples of what not to do. And if you do do them, what's going to happen? See, if you go against God's plan and God didn't told you he's going to do something, just be patient and, and wait. That don't mean you just sit on your thumbs and don't do nothing. But anyway, here we go. Genesis 16. I'm going to go over 16 and 17. Okay? Now, I told you, Abram had, it wasn't like he was a poor man when he left his, his, his father's house. Lot had his. Lot was over there in Sodom, and you know what's going to happen over there. And Abram had his. Excuse me. Well, anyway, trying to trying to rush. Now you already you trust God, but was it one hundred percent belief? Because hey, you getting old. You almost a hundred years old, and you like hey look. I ain't got no seed line to lead all this. But God done told you, just chill. And here comes his wife. She's old too. She come over with a plan. Hey, look, Abel. Take my handmaid. I guess that's what you call her handmaid uh, uh, in verse, uh, verse 1. Now, Sarah, Abel's wife, bear him no children. She had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Now, you know Hagar. Uh, anyway, so, tells Abraham, you know, hey, look, I will, he's, he's Abram. Name ain't changed yet. Hey, look, just go on into her, you know, let's, let's get this thing rolling. Outside of the plan. Now, him being a man, he went on and did what his wife requested. Oh, verse four, and when, and he went in unto Hagar and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. She knew, hey, I, I can't handle this. I know I said it, but I shouldn't have said it. Hey, honey, I suggested it. You should have been, you the man, you shouldn't have did it, but you did it. Hey, but guess what? Now you got to deal with it. I give my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despising her eyes, and the Lord 
judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it please. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her faith. Oh yeah, she was nasty. <laughs> Come on, you know, all you women out there, you know, if you make a mistake like she did, you, you know how you're going to be. So we ain't got to go there. So anyway, Hagar runs away. That angel of the Lord in verse 9. Now, when the Bible says the angel of the Lord, usually that Lord is L-O-R-D, it's all caps. Now, I told you how that is, Y-H-B-H, or you can break it down in English, Jehovah, when you add the vowels. Uh, Yahweh, not not Yahweh, Yahweh. <laughs> it's a V, not a W. So anyway, Verse 9, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hand. He then gave Hagar a commandment. Hagar listens. And the angel of the Lord said, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with a child, and thou shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael. Who named it son? God. The Lord. Because the Lord have heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he should dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Uh, and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her. That God sees me. For she said, have I also here looked <clears throat> after him to see me. Wherefore, the well was called, I won't try to pronounce this, Barry Lark-Gara. Behold, it was in between Kadesh and Bari. And Hagar buried Abraham a son, and Abraham called his son's name. At, and Abraham called his son's name, which he called bad Ishmael. Abraham was fourscore and six years, and Hagar bared him a son. So he was 86 years old. Now, he didn't bear Isaac until he was 100, 14 years later. So that means Ishmael going to be 13 years old. You know, takes nine months, you know, to do his thing. Take that into consideration. Keep it moving. And uh, Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house. Uh, wait a minute. I don't too far. That's 17. Uh, so he was 99 years old. Genesis 17. Going to keep him. And when Abraham was 90 year, 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me. And be thou perfect. Now you know no man in the flesh is perfect. The only one that was Jesus. But this perfect is mature. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. Now. <clears throat> he's done already told him this before. He's got to reiterate. You got to remind. Sometimes God got to hit it on our shoulders and remind us. You know, because sometimes we just don't get it the first time. And Abraham, and Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him. Sam, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. This is when he going to change his name. Neither shall thy name be more called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. Nations, one. Kings shall come out of thee. I will establish my covenant. Now, understand, now, now, now 
Now get this down because <laughs> there's going to be some things you're going to say, oh, well, he made a covenant with, uh, with Ishmael. Mm, okay. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thou see after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. That was a lot said. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Done deal. Now, what has to happen? And God said unto Abel, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which shall which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Gotta be some bloodshed. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in that house and he that is bought with the money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for everlasting covenant. Let's go over that last part of verse 13. Now, there's conditions for this covenant. Number one, hey, you got to Cut your foreskin. Bloodshed. Every man child is in your house. We got either your seed or not your seed. You bought with money, whatever. Foreskin got to be good. Got to be circumcised. See, it was a physical thing. Just circumcise your heart and mind now. It's all spiritual. It happens in the spirit realm before it happens here. But God is making this covenant with them, with Abram. Tell them, I'm going to make you follow many nations. Kings going to come out of you and nations going to come out. So after the eighth day, whoever's born in his house, regardless, Foreskin, male, got to go. And the uncircumcised, verse 14, and that uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people, and he had broken my covenant. If you don't get circumcised, you can break the covenant. And God said unto Abram, As for Sarah, thy wife, Thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations, of kings, of people shall be of her. Then Abram fell on his face and laughed. And said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him. Okay, so anyway, Abram said unto God, verse 18, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And he, he named, uh, no, he named Ishmael, he named Isaac. And I will get this through. Establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. He ain't say through Ishmael. And with his seed after him. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anyway. And as for Ishmael, 
I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. I have done deal. And will make him fruitful. And will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. Now, <clears throat> Ishmael is really called the father of the Arab nations. You know, like Jacob had 12. So uh, through the Bible, even in some of the chapters, uh, it'll read Jacob, then it'll read Israel, it'll read Jacob, it'll read Ishmael. You got to keep them in line, you know. Right? Who, what, when, why, and where. Those five W's. But Jacob had 12. Okay. Ishmael had 12. 12 and 12, 24. But my covenant will establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abel. So, when God says something, be patient. It's going to happen. It might not happen just like you think it should happen. And sometimes, that me, that I just talk for myself. Many times I can get in front of God and had to suffer the consequences. Oh, I heard. I prayed, heard, moved too fast. Sometimes you get you get a you birth something that you don't want want it to be birthed. Now God's going, God's in the blessing business. He's also going to spank you because you went outside and done what he told you not to do, or you got ahead of him, and he don't like that. Okay, uh, go ahead and read uh, Genesis eighteen. I'm going to finish this. Um, so Abraham was circum uh, verse twenty six. Uh, Abraham did what God told him to do. He had to circumcise himself, circumcise Ishmael, and everything that was born in his house that was older than eight days. Okay, Abram was ninety year ninety nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in this flood. And the self-same day was Abraham circumcised in us. And all the men of the house born in the house and bought with money of the stranger were circumcised. So, the covenant has started. Now, pushing on along. Not going to spoon feed you. You just go ahead and keep on reading because then you got some other chapters before you get to Deuteronomy 13 is where I'm going next. Okay? So, you got Genesis. He already told them about that 400 years. What comes after Genesis? Oh, I think it's called Exodus. So, who was in Exodus? Moses. The law was given. Some things happened. And the law is in, is in Deuteronomy too. Whatever God commands you is the law. Now, there's some rituals that uh, they don't do no more because Jesus was nailed to the cross. You got laws. You got statues. You know. So, anyway, so you had Genesis you had Exodus. You know what happened in Exodus, you know. Uh, like I said, I, I, I didn't want to get into, I wanted to cover the whole Bible. I ain't said I was going to word for word. Because, believe it or not, throughout my teaching, or what God has given me to teach, the whole word's going to get covered. Oh, yeah, it'll come back to Numbers. 
Oh, definitely. I mean, why is it called numbers? You kind of figure that out. Why is he called the chapter numbers? Most of your Bibles might give you a little uh, synopsis of each book or why it was named what it was named. Okay, so anyway, so you had Exodus. Then you had Leviticus. Then after Leviticus, you had Numbers. Okay. Now he didn't set some stuff up. Then you come Deuteronomy. Now, I always try to do things under 50 minutes, and I, I might reach that task today. Hopefully I do. Deuteronomy 13. You already didn't heard this because I went over it in the ifs a couple weeks ago. Uh, take heed to this. Deuteronomy 13, 1. It's conditional. Starts off if. Which means more than likely there's going, it's going to happen. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giving thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he speak unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Oh, that's uh, going against uh, Ten Commandments. So you already know that's, you know, it, it, it's a boot. It, it, no. Thou shalt God talk, Holy Spirit through man God talk. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, I can say this many times. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get to do 120 because of what I want to say. I didn't say it many times, and you probably didn't heard it many a times. You are here be for a test. Your life, however long as it is, is a test. One day, two day, what however long you're here on this earth, or let's just say placed in your mother's womb, is a test. Because we know now, now that, I mean, you know, uh, you got abortion, but still got that place, that soul in that mother's womb. Now, it's up to the mother to bring that life out to this world. Not getting into that. You do with what you want to do with that. You're going to get judged on your works. And that's part of your works, of a woman's work. Anyway. So, God then, then, then told you, don't do it. Don't hearken. I mean, don't do it. Underline that. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Now, we got a lot of people running around with a lot of different titles these days. Prophet, prophetess, and... Yeah, okay. And uh, most, most, we still ain't got through all these other prophets and uh, uh, just in the word. And Jesus didn't, didn't say that and foretold you all things. So what's all these new prophet and prophet is? What are you telling us? You telling us what the other prophets already said? So you just got a title? The apostles is 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 uh, biblically is one that sent forth with the message. Evangelists they evangelize, they bring in to the church. The pastor pastors them. Hopefully that that pastor is green, keeps it watered, teaches them the word. So they can be disciples, which are students. Discipleship. They was disciples before they was apostles. Then they can go out 
and bring in more people. Jesus said, I'll teach you to be fishermen of men and women. But he's in told you right here, don't hearken to that. Okay. And let's just say you just say, okay, you know, that's God talking. You shall walk after the Lord your God, at verse 4, and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. Remember Jesus said, the sheep know my voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Highlight that all underlined. That I means mm, he's kind of going over those Ten Commandments. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to what? Death. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Now, I told you, we all got our own little Egypts. We've been in bondage on something, alcohol, cigarettes, whatever, sex, Egypt, our own little world. We think it's good, the grass is green on the other side. But God, you know, they brought you out of that. They told you the right way and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God command thee to walk in. This is another thing that, you know, Jesus is the word. He's telling you. So should I put the evil away from the midst of thee. Now, here we got verse 6. If conditional, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy father, name the other gods of the people, which are round about you. Now unto thee, afar off, from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou should not consent, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thou I pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterward the hand of all the people. Now, we know you ain't going to kill him. But you got to discern this stuff. Man, man, my, Satan's slick. They ain't going to go, hey, look, you know, uh, you, know I, you don't need to be going to that church over there, you know. See, he, he he's reading every word out of the word, you know. Your, your ear ain't getting tickled, you know. He ain't uplifting you and this and that. Um, he ain't really teaching God's word, you know. You need to, you need to come over here. See, see, we got the traditional things happening over here, you know. He's slick. Don't hearken into that prophet. When that other little thing talk on your shoulder, hey, you know, he on the left side, he ain't on the right, he, 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 he's in your ear telling you this, this, and that. Don't listen. Please don't. Now, <clears throat> verse 10, And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died because he had sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God. Now, you know, I got to say this, it, it's not in none of my notes. You know how they, uh, uh, hey, look, you unevenly yoke. If, conditional, you marry to someone, let's say they don't believe in God. And uh, you can call them whatever you want to call them. Now, now, you have to be that example. You're not really unequally yoked until they try to turn you away from what you believe. 
In other words, stop you from going to church, stop you from praying, stop you from doing this. Yeah, you unequally yoked. But if they ain't bothering you and they letting you do what you, what God has just told you to do, and yes, you had to be that example. See, the only example that other people are going to see, especially those close to us now, you know, especially those who are born in the same household. They don't believe you can change anyway. I got you in your little box, you know. And they ain't going to let you out. Every time they see you, do you remember? Yeah, you know you remember. Why are they bringing it up? Because they ain't bringing up, most of the time they ain't bringing up good stuff anyway. Most of the time they bringing up some old bad stuff. Because they want your mind to go back there. Because they ain't got no father. But to say all that, Verse 11, I, I want you to highlight it. Uh, there are some pens out there that you can buy. It's, it's like a crown that you can highlight and it won't bleed through your Bible because the Bible paper is a little different, a little lighter. But anyway, uh, if I had some, I would tell you the name of them. But anyway, I mean, I got some. Let me see if I got some here. It's called uh, Bible Safe gel highlighters okay i'm not trying to promote them i'm just trying to let you know you need to highlight something get the bible safe from jail anyway verse 11 and all israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this as among you verse 12 if thou shalt hear, say in one of these cities, which the Lord thy God had given thee to dwell therein, saying, Certain men, the children of Bela, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their cities, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently, and behold, if it be true in the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you. Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of the city. I'm going to stop there. I've been in this 47 minutes. I think you got the gist of it. Now we got these bleeding heart Christians, quote unquote. Either you're going to go by the law Jesus said, I, I didn't come to change a dot or tittle to the law. Now, if someone does, now, you know, man, we got uh, different degrees of murder. They might have different degrees of rape, but all I know is that uh, if you lie and wait and take another person's life, I mean, you just outright murder. God said, send them to me. And when he said send them to me, he ain't talking about go through all this old stuff. And, um, he's, he's telling you, execute them. Now, I know the law. You know that lady that's blindfolded with the scales? It ain't equal. I already know that. And they can set it up because man is evil. He, he, man's in charge. So I do understand it. Don't think that I'm ignorant of, of that. I'm not. A lot of murders happen in those states that don't have uh, executions. Same thing for rape. God said, send them on up to me. Now, I would make a statement. I'll make it next week. Because I need to have the, that verse. and I know it's in John. But I don't even want to go there. I might bring it out next week. I, I, I know I said it online. Uh, but without me backing it up with scripture right now, there's no use of me wasting my time saying it. Now, so... Verse 15, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of the city, 
with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly and all that is therein and the cattle therein and the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoils of it in the midst of the street thereof and shall burn the fire of the city. Okay. He's telling you what to do with these false prophets and these dreamers. They ain't heard nothing from God. And you out there following them. Now we got it happening today. You know, you know the big lie. And our whatever you want to call it, democracy that we want to call it, our republic, this government, this thing that's getting ready to happen in the next couple of weeks, the House, the Senate, the President, you won't vote for that until 2024. Yeah. Now, you do know the United States is an experiment. Are they going by Deuteronomy 13? Is that experiment going to last? That's the question. See, why the sword of Israel was necessary? Well, why the sword of the United States is necessary? I mean, out here you got same-sex marriage. I mean, you got Solomon more just, just happening. Just, you know, hey, hey, go for it. Now, that which is an abomination to God God ain't blind. Now he's a merciful God and, and you know, he's long suffering. But you know, some of that stuff, hey, you know. And then you're gonna call yourself, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, yeah. Now, I it, everybody has a right to do whatever they want to do. That homosexuality, that, that is oh. And you can take that all the way back to the garden. It's just as old as I am. It, that, uh, that's how old it is. Ain't, ain't nothing new under the sun. Now, if you think this thing ain't winding up, this uh, thing that we got that we call democracy, this big test that we're going through, you have a right to vote. If you ain't voting, you just might just keep your mouth shut. Sometimes you're voting for the less of the evil. Or maybe you need to run for office. But now, what? For you to run, you're going to give up your morals and that which God has given you to walk upright before man as an example? Hmm. But anyway, hey, you know, hey, I'm a news junkie. I listen to both sides, you know, conservative and liberal. You know, uh, I'm going to hit verse uh, Deuteronomy 20 so I can get out of this. And next week, we will get into Jeremiah, a type of the Messiah. I'll be going over Jeremiah 1 and 4. I'll put it out there on Facebook, uh, what you need to, uh, the references. Um, also, Ezekiel 18, you know, uh, you know, when everybody say, hey, you know, I decided to give my soul to God. And, you know, well, God already got it. You know, he created you. It's so up to him to do whatever he want to do with you. Now, just starting off, and you can finish reading this, but basically I didn't answer the question. Deuteronomy 20. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and see his horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come now unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Now, get this down in your soul. If you ain't got this, get this. Because I'm going to end with this. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you. 
against your enemies. Why? To save you. Now, if you don't do his commandments, remember I told you everything's conditional. Is he going to go before you? Is he going to fight your battle? So that, 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 please go back and listen to the, those two messages I gave on the earth. Because it's all in Deuteronomy 20. Okay? An example. If you don't listen to what God says, please read the rest of Deuteronomy 20. Because I don't want to come back to it. We'll go over it in Bible study Tuesday night, though. Because that's where I'm going to start in Deuteronomy 20. Well, I said, mm, Genesis 15, 7, and yeah, yeah. But hit 20 hard. That's going to be uh, a YHVA COP chat room, 7 p.m. Tuesday night. Okay, I'm trying to get all the promotionals out there before that one hour has hit. Uh, if you want to make any donations to this uh, ministry, then go to YHVACOP.org. That's our website. Every message that I have put out is on CD. Oh, it's on uh, see it on Facebook or it's on uh, YouTube. But if you want a, a CD of it, you can make a donation for $5. We get it to you. All our donations, any money that's passed through this church, through the web site, goes through PayPal. They get your information. The only thing I get is an email address to send you a thank you. And, I, and I'll send you your, 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 your tax deduction at the end of the year. If you only did $5, that's what the letter you're going to get is for $5. Don't say, hey, I donated 250 and you only donated five dollars because I'm going to report it to the IRS. That between you and the IRS. I don't think you want to go to jail for that. No, you don't. But like I said, Deuteronomy 20, he tell you what he's going to do. He's going to tell you what he's going to do, how he's going to do it, with your part to play in. And if you don't do it, this is what's going to happen. Consequences. I got to bring the sword on you. Now Jesus said his tongue is like a two-edged sword going in and out. Cut thou asunder. So let's just cut off all that evil stuff from us. You know how I say us? I'm including myself. You know, I ain't no better than you. <laughs> okay, all right. Anyway. I'm through with this portion. This is part three, part four. We're going we're gonna to get into Jeremiah next week. Please join Tuesday night. I'll put that uh, on the website, on Facebook. I'll put the link out there. Most time I have to invite you in. But you just hit the, uh, hit the link. You don't have to have Facebook. It's Messenger Facebook chat room. Okay, all right. I want to thank you. Have yourself a rest of a blessed day. Let God encamp his angels about you, keep you safe, keep our truth safe. Send his Holy Spirit to comfort those who are sick and shut in. And just let them know that there, there is a God. And he do love you. A lot of times he don't love what we do, but he loves us. That's why he created us created us to pleasure him. What pleases him? Our faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Okay? Thank you. Have yourself a blessed and wonderful day and a beginning of another work week and uh, we'll see you next week or see you Tuesday night. Okay? And we are, uh, like I said, we're starting I'm gonna start in Deuteronomy 20. We're gonna we're gonna hit that. We're gonna get off into some things. 13 and 20. Like I said, if you don't do what he tell you to, then you know, hey, you know, take inventory, go back and check. 
did I do what God told me to do? All right, have yourself a blessed day. All this I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen.